Mr. Masood Karachel. How has the idea of the TLO changed? Could you give us a brief development history? Uh, in 2003, with the support of the Heinrich Böll Foundation, we started the liaison or the tribal liaison office in the southeastern Afghanistan. And at that time, the Afghan state building process had newly started. So subnational governance was more or less non-existent. So the idea of the liaison office was to create that linkage between the rural areas, regional centers, with uh, the newly established Afghan government in Kabul. So this is where we started. But we soon realized in the evolution process that not only the communities needed our support, but also Afghan government state institutions were also in need of support. So what we decided to focus on creating those linkages more in the long-term phase, looking at the needs of the community, but also looking at the priorities of the state as they were emerging, and how to connect these two. Uh, two aspects came much later on. What was the issue of uh, linked to youth? and also issues linked to women, especially in the customary uh, justice uh, or in the informal justice sector, women uh, had a very limited outreach. So over the years of our experience, uh, not have we only contributed to civic education and elections, how democracy works. Uh, secondly, providing more platform for younger civil society organizations like the youth movements, trying to give them support, but also working in the area of informal justice through shuras and jirgas in which local disputes are resolved, having women staff in our field offices that can bring in more voices of disputes or issues which were specifically linked to women, how that they can be addressed. So most of the political dialogue platforms which we are organizing either on development, uh, or we were looking at issues of good governance, we made sure that women also had a voice from these areas which were remote and insecure uh, and participation for different segments of society, as I mentioned, youth organizations or women groups, but also local traditional tribal elders also had a very limited uh, voice, I would say, uh, in, the, in the process of state building in Afghanistan. So through research, through dialogue platforms and peace building programming, but also livelihood, uh, we managed to reach a broader range of Afghan society uh, to bring them together. And the other element which I would like to focus on is advocacy. Uh, Afghan society and uh, civil society activism, in our view, was a bit fragmented and very much urban focus. So through our advocacy efforts with other civil society organizations in Kabul and in the region, we were able to bring all these different dynamics and to amplify those voices at the Kabul level and also in trips uh, like we are right now having this interview with Heinrich Böll Foundation to, to make the international community aware uh, that there is different aspects in Afghan society. It's a highly dynamic society, different regions having different problems. Is to highlight that there are achievements that we have achieved and how to build on them to maintain uh, in the areas of good governance, in areas of rule of law, and having more political participation from different groups, as I mentioned. How did the perception change with the international and national actors over the years? I think with the international especially, uh, it took some time. Uh, there was very limited support, first of all, for an idea of an organization like us which wanted to work mainly with the customary structures. Because post-2001, the international community was uh, focused very much on supporting more modern civil society organizations and not so much the traditional ones which needed capacity. But soon I think the international community in the state building process in Afghanistan realized that customary structures, uh, ruler um, community bodies had to be engaged in the state building process because insecurity was also on the rise in Afghanistan when we had armed insurgency which was challenging the sovereignty of the state and of course we had a large presence of international troops. Uh, and most of them had very limited understanding of how ruler Afghanistan or how uh, where majority of Afghan population live, more than 60% is in ruler Afghanistan. So through our research we were able to create more insight uh, in assisting the international community on what kind of programming or what kind of approach to have uh, in the state building process to support larger uh, group of Afghans. Uh, so that was, uh, I think, uh, one key area where we were uh, able to contribute. 
Uh, internally, uh, in Afghanistan, as I mentioned to you, there is a big rural urban divide. Those who are in the urban centers uh, have more uh, access to services, and civil society is much more vibrant over in the last 12 years. Uh, whereas in rural communities, uh, the opinions or issues that were important to them, what we were able to do, as a ch also a very big challenge, but it took us like 10 years to work on this, is how to link more urban and rural uh, agendas by bringing them together. So these were the two areas that uh, both internally uh, we were successful to a large extent uh, to lobby for the needs of the rural communities and their demands, whether it came to political settlement, whether it was linked to issues of their development needs, uh, or broader uh, state building processes like elections, uh, democracy, uh, and regional issues which were important. So linking both rural and urban uh, dialogue, uh, I would say, was challenging uh, but at the same time, I would say we were uh, successful in making some breakthroughs. But these breakthroughs, as I said, are not uh, short term. We have to see this again in the long term. Afghanistan will be needing uh, international support, but also domestic legitimacy of the government, of civil society institutions, and also informal institutions, is how to bring them together, because Afghanistan is still not a post-conflict society. We still have conflict ongoing in Afghanistan, and 2014 is a year of transition, where Afghans will be taking more responsibility. So to have the different clusters of civil society and having more ruler population and their customary structures is how can we create more cooperation between the two. Mm -hmm. How did the perception of these international and national actors play out on the support of your organization and the development of the TLO? Uh, I would say um, the development was a tremendous journey. Uh, with more international focus on Afghanistan, we were able to expand into new regions and, and trying to highlight what were the local challenges which existed. So this was of great interest to the international community. But the problem which we also faced that most of the international community interventions were short term. Uh, given the military strategy uh, was more dominant than development strategy for most of the nations. So that kind of an environment, especially for an Af Afghan organization, uh, you always need to uh, struggle against finding long-term programming support from international community, uh, which then creates challenges on the ground if you want to have a long-term relationship with the people you're working, because when you work with people, it can, uh, to achieve uh, quick results is, can be difficult. So one of the problems which I saw in Afghanistan or the experience of the liaison office was that uh, sometimes or most of the time uh, international actors were looking for quick fixes to the Afghan problem uh, the, because of the pressure that they were having in their own countries of results in Afghanistan. Uh, whether it was European countries or the United States, uh, these are democratic nations where you have parliaments and so on, and people demand questions why this war is taking so long. Uh, and that's why I think which put too much pressure on international actors which were based in Afghanistan to, to give answers back to their host countries, uh, to their native countries on, on achievements in Afghanistan. So this juggling process of maintaining sustainability as an institution uh, and maintaining good capacity vis-a-vis uh, -vis of what you want to implement on the ground was a very hard choice. Uh, and in some cases, as the international military withdrawal is already taking place and there's reduction in aid to Afghanistan, so sustainability of the organization and sustainability of the programming or the handshake that we have done with civil society organization, informal uh, institutions at the local level uh, has been quite challenging to maintain that kind of a spotlight on the issues that we want to work. Looking into the future, the year of transition 2014 in Afghanistan and beyond, how do you picture your country and also the work of the TLO within Afghanistan? Uh, I would say there are several advantages and disadvantages. Uh, in terms of advantages, uh, we have been able to create uh, access and inroads with local community over the last 10 years. So for state building 
programming, uh, especially in the areas of good governance, or having access to issues, let's say, linked to youth and women, which uh, have limited voice in our society, we have a very good uh, access points now. Uh, we can work in areas where probably many other international or local organizations will have difficulties in having a reach out. Uh, so now, if we are successful in finding the right programs to support those uh, communities or those demographics of society that we are working with, then there's a good opportunity. The, the negative aspect is that uh, insecurity has risen in Afghanistan, there is more pressure on human rights in Afghanistan, and state institutions still are having the challenge of uh, sustainability as well as civil society organization. So if the international community sort of forgets Afghanistan or interest reduces in Afghanistan, then that will make our work quite challenging because there's other conflicts in, the, in our region, like in uh, Syria or in Northern Africa. Uh, these have uh, put pressure on attention of international community in Afghanistan. So uh, these are the odds we are fighting, is to maintain uh, attention on the issues in Afghanistan and the international community not forgetting us. Uh, and for us, as I said, we have achieved that level of confidence with the people we work, uh, in understanding our organization and what we do. And of course, with other civil society groups, that we come together and, and work more in collaborative m manner, I think we will have larger long-term impact. Uh, but as I said, again, post-2014, uh, as we are here right now in Germany, the BMZ has a long-term vision, or the German government is looking at a, uh, at a long-term commitment to Afghanistan, so that's very welcoming. I hope other uh, European and US and other countries which have been engaged in Afghanistan to also have a long-term strategy uh, of sustainable development. And of course, the other aspect which I would like to mention is that there's too much talk of military transition and less talk of civilian transition. Uh, I think the achievements that people of Afghanistan, both men and women, uh, have made, uh, in my view, uh, is, uh, is great uh, in, in the specific time period. But I think sometimes the international community and the local populations in Germany or in the U.S. think that uh, it has been a very long war and what are the results. The results are many in Afghanistan and uh, you can see more women now working, you have women in our armed forces, uh, you have women in state bureaucracy, you have vibrant civil society organizations across the board, uh, we have a great uh, sense of uh, freedom of speech in Afghanistan. Uh, and a very vibrant media across the country. And with the current election process is another what you can see is the Afghans are preparing for the elections, not necessarily for war. So these are, I would say, are the achievements. And most of the candidates which are running for elections right now as presidential candidates, they all want, at least in their slogans, national unity, equal rights for everybody, job opportunities. So Afghanistan is now a democratic country. It has its flaws. Of course, it's not a perfect democracy. But uh, this is the greatest achievement. And how now do we build as a nation on these achievements and have more confidence in our own institutions, which are still developing? Uh, I think Afghanistan would need another decade of international commitment and support so that we are able to pass through this phase of challenges. Um, but at the same time, sometimes I feel that in the Western countries, it has felt like not much has been achieved in Afghanistan, and which is not true. Uh, and this can be seen from by those who can come to Afghanistan, visit uh, the, the different institutions, organizations, social, non-social, political groups, uh, I would say have made tremendous progress.